self-evaluation, how would you answer these questions? Do you redo the work that you do over and over and over until you get it just right? Do you say to yourself, you know, it's just easier for me to do it rather than to train somebody else to do it? Do you think that there's only one way to do things and your way is the way to do it? And if somebody comes by and helps you out, they have to do it exactly like you do? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then you may very well be a victim of perfectionism. I'd like to invite you to pull out your outline and to fill in the blanks as we work our way through. Perfectionism is trying to prove your worth by being perfect. You know, and when you think about it, perfectionism is really a counterfeit maturity, spiritual maturity, because in perfectionism, what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, well, I want to give my very best by God. I want to be perfect for God. When in reality, what we're really doing is we're wanting to impress God so that then we are able to show our worth to ourselves, but also to God as well. You know, there are two great enemies of grace. One is legalism, and that's trying to do the approved rules or getting approval through following the right rules. But the other is perfectionism. And perfectionism really becomes like a prison for us. Today I want to talk about perfectionism and God's answer to get you out of that prison. And it's simply spelled with five letters, grace. You see, perfectionism is a very destructive thing in our lives. It defeats our self-worth because we think if we're not perfect, then others won't accept us. But even more than that, we think that God won't accept us. Secondly, it damages our relationships. When we, are t when we tend towards perfectionism, what we do is we not only place high demands on ourselves, but we place high demands on the people around us. And so we not only become demanding, but we also become cold-hearted when we are perfectionists as well. And then third is it destroys our happiness. Because we have this image of what we're supposed to be like and what we're supposed to accomplish and what we're supposed to look like and that's never really attainable in our lives. And so what happens is we set ourselves up to fail because we think, well, I've got to be all of that to be happy and I can never actually reach that. Most of you are perfectionists. Learn perfectionism from somebody around you when you were growing up. But the good news is that you don't have to be stuck there, that God has an answer to that. You know, the reality is what all of us need to do is we just need to relax. You know, isn't it interesting that we live in the big easy, but how many of you would raise your hand and say you're fairly stressed out right now in your life? Yeah? I mean, it's a contradiction, isn't it? And what you need to do is relax. And we're going to use the word relax as an acrostic today for five things you need to do to get out of jail in perfectionism. Number one is you've got to realize nobody's perfect. I heard a story not too long ago about a perfect woman that met a perfect man and they had a perfect courtship until he finally introduced or... or began to propose to her and he handed her a perfect wedding ring. They had a perfect wedding and their, their life together was, well, it was perfect. Until on one Christmas Eve, it was snowy and icy out on the roads. And what they saw was something that was broken down on the side of the road and somebody that was stranded there. When they pulled over, what they did was they saw that it was Santa Claus. And he had all of these presents, and their, their heart went out not only to Santa, but to all the kids that weren't going to get the presents. And so they said, Santa, get in the car. We'll load up all the presents. And they started going from neighborhood to neighborhood, house to house, so that the children would be able to wake up for Christmas presents the next morning. But as they began to, to go later in the evening, the, worst, the conditions got worse. They got snowier and it got icier. And they took a turn in the road too quickly. And the car ran off the road and hit a tree, killing two of the three people. Now, who do you think the survivor was? Well, it wasn't Santa Claus, because we all know that there's no such thing as Santa Claus. And it wasn't the man, because that the man, well, there's no such thing as a perfect man, right, ladies? So what that means is that the woman survived, but the woman wrecked the car, which means she wasn't perfect after all. 
You see, the point is this, that nobody's perfect. And when you truly accept God's grace and the need for God's grace, then you understand that nobody can be perfect and none of us are perfect. Number two is you've got to embrace God's unconditional love. Paul writes, See how very much our Heavenly Father loves us, for He allows us to be called His children. And think of it, we really are. You see, when you become a follower of Christ, you're not just a servant of God, you become a child of God. You become a child of the King. You become a member of the royal family. And because of that, then you get God's unconditional love thrown upon you. But sometimes that's the most difficult thing for us to accept, is it not? That God can leave and love someone like me? Pastor Lee Strobel tells the story of a, a baptism service in his uh, church. He said that they had a number of people that were coming forward, adults that were giving their life to Christ that day. And each of them had been given a small piece of paper. And as the pastor stood up and they started into the baptismal service, he said, now those of you that are going to come forward to be baptized, I want you to write your deepest, darkest sin on that piece of paper. And I want you to come forward and I want you to pin it to the cross because you know the scriptures tell us that when Jesus was nailed to the cross, our sins were nailed to the cross as well. And so one by one, the people started coming forward along with one woman in the congregation and she wrote about her experience and this is what she had to say. I remember my fear in that moment. In fact, it was the most fearful moment of my life I wrote as, a, as tiny as I could on that piece of paper, my sin. And I was so scared that someone was going to open the piece of paper and read it and find out that it was me. I wanted to get up and walk out of the sanctuary on that day. The guilt and the fear were that strong. But when, they came, when my turn came, I walked forward to the cross. I pinned my piece of paper onto the cross. And then I moved in front of the pastor he looked at me deep into my eyes, and I just knew at that moment that he was going to go over and take a look at that piece of paper. But it was in that moment I heard God's voice, and this is what he had to say. I love you. It's okay. You've been forgiven. I felt so much love for me, for me, a terrible sinner. It's the first time that I've ever really felt forgiveness and unconditional love, and it was unbelievable and indescribable. Do you have that secret sin that nobody else knows about in your life? God's grace and love is there in spite of it. You see, that's the essence of the doctrine of grace, that grace can be summed up in four words that God is for you. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter how far you've fallen or how much you have failed. God still loves you. He loves you with everything. In fact, he even said, you are precious in my sight. And so God can never love you any more than he does right now. And no matter what you do, God will never love you any less in this moment. Number three, you've got to let God handle things. You see, at the root of perfectionism is a dire desire for control. And in deep inside all of us is a little control freak, isn't it? I mean, we want to have control of our lives. We want to dictate how things unfold. We don't like being caught off guard. And so all of us have this idea that we can control life. But when we do that, we're preventing God from being God. We need to let go and what? Let go. God. We need to let go and let God be God in our lives. Give it over to Him. In fact, the scriptures tell us that we are to cast all of our cares onto Him. How many of you are fishermen? You know, you know when, you're, when you get out to fish, you, you know, it's all about the cast, right? And, and you not only have to hold on to, to the fishing pole, but, but you got to push the button. And when you cast, you got to let go of that button. If you don't let go of that button on that reel, then absolutely nothing happens. And the same is true in terms of casting all of our fears and concerns onto God. Casting all of our sins. you got to let go of it and give it over to God. Number three, or excuse me, number four. You've got to act in faith, not fear. 
Remember how you got into God's family in the first place? For it is by grace that you have been saved, what? Through faith. And that's the only way that you're ever going to get saved is by grace. There's only one way to get into heaven, and that is saved through grace. But it comes to us by faith. It's a free gift. It's a gift that's given to us by God. I put my faith in God's grace. And that's not only how you become a Christian, but it's how you and I are called to live throughout the rest of our lives. It is by grace through faith. So Colossians says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him. Live in Him by grace. Live in Him by faith. You need to not only understand that literally, everything in life that you are and have is a gift of God's grace. It is by God's grace that you have the clothes on your back. It is by God's grace that you have the mind that you have. It's by God's grace that you have the eyes and the heart that you have. It is by God's grace that you drove in your car that you own. It is by God's grace that you have a shelter over your head to sleep in. It is by God's grace that you have the family that you do. It is by God's grace that you have the friends that you do. Everything you have, everything that you are, it is by God's grace and God's grace grace alone. And we need to recognize that and we need to claim that it is by God's grace. By God's grace, it is ours. Some of you have been living in that prison of perfectionism for a, a long, long time and you're thinking that you got what you got because you got it and God didn't get it. But the fact of the matter is that you got to let go of of that perfectionism and today is the day that you can have your pardon. Today is the day that God says, I signed that pardon order. The gates to your cell are open and you can walk out a free man or a free woman by God's grace. To walk away from this trap of perfectionism that you can live up to this impossibility and that you expect everybody else to live up by that impossibility. God's grace is offering freedom to you. Number five, you've got to exchange our perfectionism for God's grace. You know what perfectionism does? It destroys peace. How many of you could have a little more peace in your life? Amen? And perfectionism destroys peace. You see, you're going to either have perfectionism in your life or you're going to have peace in your life. You cannot have both in your life. I love what Jesus has to say in Matthew chapter 11. Are you tired? Raise your hand. Are you worn out? Raise your hand. Here's what he goes on to say. Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to make a real test, a real rest, and learn. Now listen to this phrase in the translation of the message. I'll show you how to take a real rest and learn the unforced rhythms of life in me. Doesn't that sound appealing? This is what God has for us. What a deal, and it's free, and you're going to fail a lot in life. You know, you're going to fail and let down a lot of people because of the expectations and the responsibilities that they have put on your life. But here's the other thing. You're going to fail under the expectations you place on yourself. And you know that you're going to fail God again and again. For we are all sinners who have fallen short of the grace of God. But this we know. God's grace is available to us. And he makes up the difference. You see, of course you're going to fail. You're only human. But the Bible says to us that you don't have to worry about that. If you've received God's grace and you know and have received his unconditional love. Because when God's unconditional love comes into your life, you can become anybody and you can do anything by the grace of God. You remember the name Greg Luganis, one of the greatest divers in Olympic history for the United States. Greg Luganis won gold medals both in the 1984 Olympics on the uh, springboard, three meter springboard, but also on the platform. And he did, again, did it again in 1988. But from the platform in 1984, it came down to the very last dive. Greg Luganis was in second place. He needed to hit an almost perfect dive. 
And for him to actually to make, to, to get the gold medal, he needed to do his very best. Take a moment as you watch this dive. 